This presentation is part of the TI in Focus AP Calculus video series. In this video, I'll discuss some technology solutions and problem extensions for the 2019 AP Calculus exam, free response question AB2. My name is Steve Kokoska. I am a professor at Bloomsburg University in Pennsylvania, and I'm a former AP Calculus chief reader. Here is an outline of the information presented in this video. I'll start by reviewing the free response question, and then the scoring guidelines used at the AP Calculus reading. And I'll focus on the solutions presented in these guidelines, not how the points were awarded. I'll present the solution to each problem in a little greater detail than given in the scoring guidelines. I'll show how to use technology to explore and answer parts of this question and to confirm solutions where appropriate. And because the free response questions are usually very comprehensive, I'll suggest some problem extensions, additional AP calculus type questions, some associated with the information given in the problem, and some of these may be calculator active. Just a reminder, this is a calculator active problem. And that means that students may be required to use their calculator in some or all parts of the problem. In this problem, the velocity of particle p is given by a differentiable function v sub p. Selected values of v sub p of t are given in the table. And we know that particle p is at the origin at time t equals 0. In part a, we need to justify why there must be at least one time t for t between 0.3 and 2.8 at which the acceleration of particle p is zero. In part b, we are asked to use a trapezoidal sum to approximate the value of the definite integral from zero to 2.8 of v sub p of t. In part c, a second particle q moves along the x-axis with velocity given by the function v sub q. We need to find the time interval during which the velocity of the particle is at least 60 meters per hour. And we also need to find the distance traveled by particle q over this time interval. In part d, we are given the position of particle q at time t equals zero. We need to use the information from part b and the function v sub q to approximate the distance between the particles p and q at time t equal 2.8. Part a was worth two points, and there were two common solutions to this problem. The first method involved the mean value theorem. There was one point for conveying that the difference v sub p of 2.8 minus v sub p of 0.3 is equal to zero and there was one point for presenting a justification using the mean value theorem. The second method involved the extreme value theorem. There was one point for specifying these two inequalities and one point for presenting a justification using the extreme value theorem. Part B was worth one point simply for the answer using a trapezoidal sum. Part C was worth three points one point for presenting the correct interval using correct interval notation or conveying an interval in exposition. One point for writing a correct definite integral that can be used to find the distance traveled by particle q and one point for the actual distance traveled by particle q. Part D was also worth three points. The first point was for writing a correct definite integral that can be used to find the distance traveled by particle q over the time interval 0 to 2.8. The second point was for finding and presenting the position of particle q at time t equal 2.8. And the third point was for the answer, the approximate distance apart. Let's take a closer look at the solutions. And remember, this was a calculator active question. So let's consider the use of technology to visualize and solve some of these problems. In part A, I'm going to focus on the solution using the mean value theorem. So first, we need to recognize the need to examine a difference quotient. 
The average acceleration of the particle between t equal 0.3 and t equal 2.8 is given by this expression, and it's zero in this case. The acceleration of the particle at time t equals c is v sub p prime of c. We're given that v sub p is differentiable, therefore it is continuous. So the hypotheses of the MVT are satisfied. The mean value theorem tells us that at some time t equals c between 0.3 and 2.8, the instantaneous acceleration, v sub p prime of c, is equal to the average acceleration. So there is a value c between 0.3 and 2.8, such that v sub p prime of c is equal to zero. This result is actually a special case of the mean value theorem called Rolle's theorem, often introduced before the mean value theorem in a calculus class. This applies when the value of the function is the same at the endpoints of the interval. Here, v sub p of 0.3 is equal to v sub p of 2.8. So the difference quotient is zero. Graphically, this means that there is at least one point on the graph of v sub p where the tangent line is horizontal. And I encourage you to look at the solution on the scoring guidelines using the extreme value theorem. In part b, there are three subintervals. We need to use the formula for the area of a trapezoid, one half times the height times the sum of the bases. Here's the sum. Remember, on the AP Calculus exam, the student does not need to simplify a final numerical answer. So this line would receive full credit, one point in this instance. But I'll simplify because I know I need this answer later. Here is a way to use technology to find this trapezoidal sum. On the TI Inspire, I entered the values for t and v sub p of t in a lists and spreadsheet page. On a calculator page, I used summation notation to find the desired trapezoidal sum. You might try finding a left and a right Riemann sum using technology and verify that the average is the trapezoidal sum. Here's a similar problem with a few extra parts. The velocity of a particle moving along the x-axis is given by a differentiable function v where v is measured in meters per hour and t is measured in hours. Selected values of v of t are given in this table. Show that there are at least two different times in the interval 0 to 4, such that the acceleration of the particle is 20. Find a left Riemann sum and a right Riemann sum to approximate this definite integral, and then find a trapezoidal sum to approximate the same definite integral and verify that the trapezoidal sum is the average of the left and the right Riemann sums. In part c, we need to solve the equation v sub q of t is equal to 60 for t between 0 and 4. Now, we have to use technology here, and I'll show you some screenshots in a minute. For now, here are the two values, and let's call one a and the other b. The free response question asked for an interval, so we need to use interval notation. And here's a mathematical expression that represents the distance traveled by the particle q over the interval a to b. And using technology, the final answer is 106.108 truncated or 106.109 rounded. Here's how I can use technology to solve this problem. First, I defined the velocity function for the particle q. Then I did some exploring on a graph screen. I found the points of intersection between the velocity function and the horizontal line y equals 60. Now, I can save the x-coordinates from the graph screen, but I prefer to explore on the graph screen and do my solving and storing on a calculator screen, and that's just a personal preference. Here, I used the nsolve command to find the left point of the interval, and here I stored the right endpoint in the variable b. Here's the calculation to find the distance traveled by the particle q over the interval a to b. 
And here is a visualization of this definite integral. The area of the shaded region represents the distance traveled, 106.109 meters. Here's another example which expands upon the information given about the particle q. We have the same velocity function, but let's consider the interval 0 to 9 this time. In this problem, you're asked to find times when the velocity is 0, to find the maximum and minimum velocity, a distance traveled, and the maximum distance from the origin. Here's a hint. You'll need to use technology here. In part D of the free response question, we have the position of particle p at time t equal 2.8 from part b. The position of particle q at time t equal 2.8 is given by this expression. And don't forget the initial condition. We need to use technology to find this value. Then, the distance between the two particles is simply the positive difference. Here is a technology solution for part d. And remember, I already defined the velocity function for the particle q. Here's the expression for the position of particle q at time t equal 2.8. And I stored this value in a variable. And then I simply subtracted to find the distance between the particles. And here is one more, I think, nice example. Suppose we have a new particle m that moves along the x-axis so that its velocity for t between 0 and 9 is given by this expression. And particle m is also at the origin at time t equals 0. Consider the particle q as given in example 2 with velocity function over the interval 0 to 9. Find the maximum distance between these two particles. I hope this video gives you a better idea of how to solve this free response problem. Some good ideas for additional practice AP calculus exam type questions, how to use technology to solve some of the parts of this problem, and to explore, confirm, and visualize results. I think this problem presents some good opportunities to discuss and visualize particle motion. And just a reminder, there are lots of valuable resources on the TI website. There is material there involving technology and calculus, classroom activities, and lots of calculator tips and tricks for test success.